Hello from the future! The video you're about to watch was recorded a week ago, the Sunday morning after the CrowdStrike meltdown. Back then, we did not know the cause of the bug that unleashed all that chaos. It was all speculation. Fast forward to Wednesday, Korean time, and we now have confirmation coming from CrowdStrike of what actually happened, and the super silly bug responsible for it all. So I leave you with the original video and I will see you at the end with an explanation of what went wrong. A software update released in a Friday morning which isn't the best time to release any kind of update by CrowdStrike, a cybersecurity company, caused what everyone was afraid the Y2K bug was going to cause. Grounded airplanes, frozen bank accounts, off-air TV stations, unreachable emergency services, hospital equipment failure, paralyzed logistic hubs, airports and train stations, offline games, frozen points of payments and more. Everywhere in the world, computers at companies, hospital rooms, airports, shopping malls, supermarkets, ATMs, among many others were all showing the infamous Windows blue screen of death. A tweet saying that the cause of this chaos was a null pointer exception, an error that a beginner programmer would make, and something that testing and code reviews should be able to catch, something that would not happen if CrowdStrike used Rust instead of C++, got 20 million views in X. But it turns out that that may not be the case. And as other more experienced people, like Google security researchers, look at the issue, it seems that the cause of this bug of epic proportions is a bit more complicated than that. Before we get into that, let's talk about what CrowdStrike is. What was the update that broke everything? And how on earth does CrowdStrike has that much power over some of the most important computers in the world? Falcon is the name of CrowdStrike's main product offering for cybersecurity. It is like an antivirus, but it is significantly more advanced. Most software is usually installed and run in what we call the user space. If a program running in the user space crashes, it typically does not bring down the entire system, because programs running in user space have limited privileges and are isolated from critical system components. Most of the applications you use daily, like browsers, text editors, and games, run in user space. For the most part, Falcon runs in user space, but it has a component called Falcon Sensor that runs in a more unrestricted restricted space called the kernel space, using a kernel driver. In the kernel space, programs have way more power. The kernel is the boss program that runs the whole computer. Programs that run in kernel space can interact directly with hardware devices. They can access and change all system memory, including memory used by programs running in the user space and the kernel itself. They can catch and change system calls made by user space applications. They have full access to the file system, and they can do many other things that give them very high control over how the computer works. It makes sense that CrowdStrike would want to run Falcon Sensor Driver at the kernel level, as this gives it the best possible view of what's happening in the computer. But as you can probably guess, because it has so much power, a kernel space program can also bring the whole system down if it has a bug that makes it malfunction. To make matters worse, the Falcon kernel driver was also one of the first drivers to be initialized in the booting process of the machine. It was designed that way so that Falcon could detect various viruses that try to start early when the machine is just starting. If you are thinking that surely if they are going to update a program that runs in the kernel space, that code must be well tested and reviewed before being released, you would be correct. The update that broke everything wasn't an update to the code of Falcon Sensor itself. The update was a new file, a configuration file that Falcon Sensor looks at. Because hackers and their techniques are evolving all the time, whenever a new exploit or virus is identified, CrowdStrike will detect how the virus or attack behave and codify those behaviors in a channel file. Channel files are files that contain configurations that Falcon Sensor looks at to know how to act and what to scan for. Updates to channel files happen over the air, which means they are sent remotely, which according to CrowdStrike is a process that happens multiple times a day. Early in Friday morning, the channel file number 291 was published and sent to CrowdStrike customers, which as we saw were many incredibly big and important companies all around the world. The configuration file triggered a logic error that made the Falcon server crash and take the whole system down with it. Shortly after releasing the bad channel file, CrowdStrike published a new version of it that fixed the logic error. To get the update, users would have to reboot their system, which will make Falcon update its configuration files automatically. For some, that solution worked. And when it didn't work, users were instructed to start their machines in safe mode and delete a file that starts with the name C000000291 with the .sys extension in the system driver's CrowdStrike directory. 
For most, that would be easy to do. But for people that use BitLocker, which is a program that encrypts the hard drive of the machine when it's turned off and needs a key to decrypt it, there are more steps to follow and recovery can take longer. While the chaos was happening, users in X discovered that the problem file was full of null characters, which could mean that maybe the file got corrupted. Or even worse, a bad actor was able to publish a file that they knew would crash Falcon. There was a post in X that got 20 million views saying that the cause of the error was a null punter exception, which means the program was trying to read the file and its contents without checking if they were null or not. If that was true, this would be a fail of massive proportions. First of all, because it is a basic mistake any competent developer should be able to avoid, but also because the code that reads those files should in theory have been tested and reviewed by multiple people. A security researcher from Google pointed out that there was in fact a null check and that the crash is very likely to be caused by something else. In a statement, CrowdStrike also clarified that the cause of the error is not related to null bytes contained within channel file 291 or any other channel file. To know what actually happened, we would have to go and read the RCA, or root cause analysis of the problem published by CrowdStrike. But that hasn't come out yet. A post on the CrowdStrike blog titled Technical Details has almost no technical details on it which people aren't too happy about. Just like they aren't too happy about how the CrowdStrike CEO handled the situation. This post in X by the CEO of CrowdStrike where he acknowledges the situation has replies like, missing we screwed up and we are sorry. Where's the apology to the users, George? Or bro just stopped the entire world and probably caused millions in damages and doesn't even apologize. We won't know what actually happened, if it was a silly mistake or something more serious, until they release an RCA and who knows how long that would take. There are still a lot of questions to be answered. Was the channel file tested before being published? If that's the case, how come no tests show the crash would happen? Was there a bad actor involved or was it an inside job to crash the stock? We don't know. What is for sure is that incidents like this highlight two things. First, how the online world relies on a very small number of companies to keep our online infrastructure running. Can you imagine the chaos if AWS, Cloudflare, and CrowdStrike all go down at the same time? And second, how you should never, ever, ever push updates on a Friday. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. And we are back. An RCA hasn't been published yet, but we do have a PIR, a preliminary post-incident report. This PIR explains how Falcon sensor works in more detail as well as what went wrong. CrowdStrike can deliver configuration updates to Falcon sensor using either sensor content or rapid response content. Content. Sensor content is actual code that is released as a Falcon sensor update. It is not delivered dynamically. CrowdStrike customers can choose whether to install it as an update or not. A part of sensor content are template types. They are the feature that enables Falcon sensor to be configured using the files we talked about before. Those files we talked about are the rapid response content. Rapid response content is how CrowdStrike tells Falcon what to scan for, what to detect and what to report, without having to release a completely new update to Falcon sensor and make everyone one upgrade. When a channel file is created, it is done in CrowdStrike servers and validated by a content validator. If the file passes validation, it is published and sent to all customers. Inside of Falcon Sensor, there is a content interpreter, which is the one that reads those files in the disk of the user, and it is designed to handle errors when reading those files gracefully. Back in March, there was a release of new sensor content. That means an update to Falcon's software with a new template type. That means they wanted to make Falcon able to understand a new type of configuration from the configuration files to detect a new kind of attack. After that, four new configuration files with that new kind of configuration were released and nothing broke. On July 19th, the chaos day, two new configuration files were released. One of them had the wrong data, but it passed validation because of a bug in the content validator, the tool used by CrowdStrike to validate those files before sending them to the customers. Because the dodgy file passed validation, it was sent to CrowdStrike customer, and when it was read by by the content interpreter, an out-of-bounds error happened, which the content interpreter was not able to handle and crashed Windows. An out-of-bounds error, that's it. An out-of-bounds error happens when you have an array, for example, and the array has 10 elements inside of it, and you ask the program to give you the item number 15th of the array. When you try to read the item number 15th of an array that only has 10 items, you are accessing a region in memory that was not allocated for that array, which means you may be reading or overriding data from other parts of your program, causing on the behavior, or you may try to access memory that does not belong to your program, causing a segmentation fault. Rust would not protect you for an out-of-bounds error. The recommended way is to never access index 
indexes directly. Like here, where we have a series of numbers and we try to get the element in the tenth position. And we are forced to write the code of what would happen if that element is found and also what happens in case it isn't. But anyways, Rust won't stop you if you try to access indexes directly like this. What will happen in Rust is that the program will panic. Rust will terminate execution of the program. Panicking is generally considered a safe operation in terms of memory safety because it is better to stop the program rather than corrupting memory and continuing execution in an invalid state. So there we have it. It was an out of bounds error. CrowdStrike said they will of course test more, test better and improve their validation techniques. But at the end of the day, this just show how fragile everything is. It is crazy to think that CrowdStrike or any company for that matter will have that much access, root access, kernel access to some of the biggest companies in the world. Thank you for watching.